I'd like to welcome all of you uh, for our Sunday worship service. And God is in this place. I, I really pray that you'll be expect to hear from him. Is anybody expecting to hear from him? I'm going to ask one more time. I really mean this question. Do you expect to hear what he has to say to you today? Can you say amen if you do? Okay. Yeah. So today, I want to talk about authority. Okay. Romans chapter 13 uh, speaks about submit to the authority, specifically civil government and uh, leaders of this nation, leaders of your uh, institution that God has established. Can I just ask you, is your heart submissive? Oh, I hate that word, right? Authority and submission. But you know what? Let me just tell you something. This is the most biblical word that you're going to find. In fact, I would, I would say submissiveness is Christ-likeness. You know, by nature, we don't like to submit. By nature, we would like to be our own king, and therefore we don't submit to any authority. But I want to begin with this statement. You know who is our authority? God is. God is our king, and we are his subject. Do you agree with that? Okay. Any problem with that? I don't think there's any problem with that. I hope there's any, uh, there is no problem with that. Especially in light of the Gospel of Romans and his great mercy and great grace, you became a Christian, and your heart is reigned by spirit of living God. Okay, your conscience. Okay, your conscience speaks what is right and wrong. Your, your conscience, God speaks what is the will of God and what is not. Okay, and what I want to ask you is, is your heart submissive? Okay, because submissiveness is Christ likeness. It was my quote. It was John Stott, okay? Submissiveness is Christ-likeness. Other than God, what are the authorities do we have as the scripture teaches? Let me list some of them. See if you are submissive toward these uh, authorities of your life. You could just focus here, okay? Your parents. Your parents are clearly authority until you get married. You're under the subject of teaching and, you know, under your parents, okay? How about your husband? Ephesians chapter 5, right? He is the head of your family, just as Christ is the head of the church, okay? Married people, right? How about government? Are you submissive toward the government, Mr. Trump? How about... Uh, you know, we just make such comments about our leaders. Let's see what God has to say, especially those who are redeemed, who are saved by grace, reigned by the Spirit of living God. How about your boss, your employer? You know, do you submit to them? Scripture clearly speaks about that in Colossians and Ephesians. How about your church leaders? Okay, do you submit to them? It's a very important um, area as well. And lastly, teachers. If you listen, uh, do you listen to and do you submit to your teachers? And here's my question. Okay, so, uh, you probably submit to, have no problem submitting to some of them, and you have problem submitting to maybe one or two. Maybe you're like that. And my question is, to you is, is your heart submissive? Toward God. Okay? I think, as we've been saying all along, Christianity is always from the, from, from the waterfall of God and then the river flows. It's never the other way around. Can river go upward? It's impossible. Grace of God and, 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 and mercy of God flows from above into your heart and then it flows. And what I want to bring out uh, one more time is that People who have a trouble submitting to their own parents will have trouble submitting to any authorities. How do you say that? Why?
Why do you say that? Why do you often say that? Because I'm so convinced over the years of ministry, doing uh, counseling, here's the reason why, okay? Parents, specifically your father and mother, right, are proxy authority between God and the rest of the world. If you know Ten Commandments, it's made up of two tablets, right? One through five, and then six through ten. One through four has to do with your vertical relationship with the Lord. And then there's a fifth one. And then there is a uh, horizontal relationship that you ought to have with your neighbors. Thou shalt not kill, commit adultery, steal, and blah, blah, blah. What's the fifth one? Do you know? What's the fifth one? Honor your mother and father. Honor your mother and father. In other words, it's so interesting, that fifth one, which, and they are human beings, but they are under the relationship, vertical relationship with your parents. And this is an insight that I read from a Jewish person. Okay. But it is very insightful. But here's what I, what, what I want to say. In other words, without going through your parents, okay, you're kind of like stuck and block for the rest of the relationship of your life. And I find it, it is true. I remember Francis Chan mentioning something like that. Okay. If you have problem relating or respecting or forgiving your own father or your mother, we would have a trouble. Okay? So, but we are called to submit to them. Is submission about fear? You submit to the government because you get, uh, you get punished. Well, government, I think, you know, it makes sense. You drive 100 miles an hour and uh, NIA, try, don't try it, okay? And you get caught. You will be penalized. U.S. government is nothing that you want to fool around with, okay? But it is submission about fear. No, Christian submission is not about fear. You know what submission is about? Loving God. Christ said, you know, I submit to him, I give myself to, to uh, my, my life for the sake of, of, of the Father, not because I must, but because I love him. I love the Father. That's Christianity, people. Okay? We are speaking about this section, very important section of Romans, and it stands out. You know why it stands out? Because nobody really talks about this, uh, this chapter, which speaks about civil authorities and government. How do you feel about Mr. Trump and, and the president of this world? So many people think he's a joke. What does God have to say about our president? Okay? That's what we want to talk about today. Okay? So there is no authority except from God. I'm going to skip this. Here it is. This is what Romans chapter 13 says after Romans chapter 12. After, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world but be transformed so you will know the will of God. This is the will of God, people. Okay, here we go. Let every person be subject, hupotasso, or submission. That's the same word. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. God is sovereign. God places the kings and presidents and government leaders. God placed them there. Okay, that's what the scripture states. And those that exist have been instituted by God. There are only three institutions in the Bible that God has instituted. What are those? Number one, marriage. Genesis chapter 2. What is the second one? Government. God instituted. And what's the third one? Anybody know? Church. If you think about it, all these three are very important. Very, very important. Marriage, representing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the relationship between Christ and the church, and husband and wife shines. That's what the marriage is about. Right? What about the government? It's God's common grace. If you, can you even imagine we go through three days without police? What would happen to this country? Can you even imagine three days, okay? Three days of, like, Whatever goes, goes. Anarchy. You do, you live your own. You know what? I thought, actually thought about that. You know, millions of people will be killed. 
in this country. Instantly, in, in, you know. There's going to be so much looting, so much fight, so much breaking. There is no law, so breaking the law. It's going to be disastrous. It's God's common grace to place a government so that there will be an order, so that his good will be carried out, his justice will be carried out. And of course, the third institution is church, which I'm going to res restrain from talking about. Church is God instituted institution. In other words, God is the king. And out of the three, a marriage, a government, and church, only church is eternal. Do you get it? Marriage is not eternal. Government is not eternal. In fact, all government will come to cease. A church will be eternal. Okay? Let me continue. <clears throat> Therefore, whoever resists the authority, authorities resist God. That's, that's, that's how scripture states. Okay? God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. Okay? I think this judgment refers to U.S. law as well as God's judgment. Right? Because this is the will of God. For the rulers are not a terror to a good conduct, but to bad. You know, we were having a Bible study last Friday. Someone shared, when I was younger, I hated police. Okay? And, and he goes, it makes sense now. It's not because the police was bad, but I was bad. Right? Because you, you uh, uh, right here, not because of the uh, good conduct, but because, because of bad. Would you have no fear of one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive the approval. And listen to this. The government or the civil authorities are God's servants, diakonos. Same thing as diakonos in the church. Who is? Civil authorities. Mr. Trump is, people. All the government officials are God's servants for your, for your good. If you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God. Second time, servant of God. An avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoers. And here is the uh, summary, the key verse of this section. Therefore, if you are a Christian, one must be in subjection, hupotasso, or submission, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. Remember conscience in Romans Gospel? We all have it. If we, well, what is conscience? Conscience is the faculty that God has given all human being, to those who, uh, all human being who are created in the image of God. God is a moral being. God knows what is good and what is evil. And so do you. Let's say an old lady here, okay, and she's being beaten by five guys. Would you feel that that's okay? Absolutely not. How do you know? You're a moral being, okay? When you see a little child, right, seven-year-old, day after day and going to work, and work 12, 14 hours, uh, 14 hours a, a, a day. Do you feel it is, it is the right thing? No, it's not. You know you're a moral being, right? But here's what happens. We are all given this conscience, but depends on how you take care of that conscience, that conscience could get really tainted or even seared, the Bible says, which is completely, completely rotted away, completely hard. It's so calloused, but do you, do you realize it's the Holy Spirit reigns in your conscience and, gives you sh and, and lets you know what is right and what is wrong. What is the will of God and what is not? That's what the Holy Spirit does through his word. Here's a key statement. We should be in subjection or submission, hupotasso, to the authorities because of your conscience. A lot of implications, right? Imagine what's happening to your conscience when you don't listen to your father. I'm not trying to be authoritative uh, message here. It's what the gospel says. Because your conscience is affected by these things. Okay? And what are the implications? Two, uh, two verses. Because of the conscience of this, you pay taxes. 
most pervasive, complete way to submit to a government authority is paying taxes. It's not something you cheat, something you, you know, try to, uh, you know, cut the corners, but you pay taxes. But the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all that is owed to them. Taxes to whom? Taxes are owed. Revenue to whom? Revenue is owed. Respect to whom? Respect is owed. Honor to whom? Honor is owed. Okay? I want to give you three reasons why uh, we need to submit to the civil authorities. We're speaking to Christians, those who are saved by grace, okay, reigned by the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, this is, will not make sense at all, and I'll explain why. Okay? The first reason why we need to listen to the civil authority is because God established them there. God placed them there. Even the regimes and the governments, that does not make sense in this world. Nebuchadnezzar, remember? Jeroboam, all these kings, wicked kings, God allowed them to be placed there. Now, this text is no small thing. If you think about it, you know, I, I read uh, John Piper this week, and he's, he's so imaginative. You watch TV for a couple of hours, and then you read Romans. What is it like? What's the difference? You watch, t uh, watch TV for a couple of hours, sitcom, wh whatever. Pretty trivial things, pretty messed up. You know it, you feel it, right? And then you read Romans. He goes, watching uh, TV for a couple of hours and then reading Romans, it's like comparing a little mountain before our house to the Rocky Mountains, to Alps and Romans is Alps. And Romans chapter 1, verse 1 through 7, that speaks about submission and authority is one of the peaks of the Alps. Very important, we as Christians. Okay? So what do we need to, what do we need to listen to and submit to the government? Because God established it, and it is God placed them there. God placed them, placed them there. Okay? The second reason is verse 1b, <clears throat> right here. 1B says, those, uh, but there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. The second reason is, if you don't, right, you are resisting God, and those who re uh, resist will incur judgment. You try to break the law of the United States, don't try it. This country is no country to fool around with. You see, God placed it there so that we will have an order, so we will have a benefit we will have a civil benefits. We'll have a benefit in your re retirement. All these things, medical benefit, everything. And the protection from all kinds of harms. Okay? God placed them there. And don't break it because uh, it'll incur judgment. And listen to this. Okay? It says, God's servant for your good. Third reason is, it's for your good. If we, we have a no, uh, no government. No policemen, no hospitals, no road. For three days, this country will collapse. It will be disastrous, right? It is for your good. It's God's common grace for you to have this government and live under the government system. Now, with these three things in mind, there is two foundational biblical assumptions that you must understand, okay? There is a two foundational assumption that you must have in order to follow this. Okay, what are those? Number one, okay, here's what it is. President and the government is the authority, but above authorities, there is authority of the authority. That's God, sovereign God. That's why we could listen to this, and this makes sense at all, if you think about it. Let me go to uh, Isaiah 40, okay? I love Isaiah 40, it speaks about the greatness of God, and it just kind of gives you uh, some sort of like perspective of who God is and whom you're dealing with. Okay? Isaiah 40, although entire chapter is about that, but I just picked out a couple of verses. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Can you picture that? I think it is meant to be uh, pictured. In the hollow of his hand, he has... Pacific Ocean, right here. 
Indian Ocean right here, Mediterranean Ocean right here, in the hollow of his hand. And marked off heavens with a, with a span, span, okay? He uses his span to measure from east to west. We're talking about the greatness of God, people. Put things into perspective. I know we talked about lump of clay, and we talked about potter. And the whole earth is clay. Okay? This is what the scripture teaches. Okay? And clothed with dust of the earth in a measure. And he weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. He has a, he has a scale and a balance. He put mountain Everest here. And then he put a hill in front of your house here. Boom. He has the scale. That's how big he is. And the next verse that I want to introduce is, look, behold, nations are like a drop from a bucket. That's the expression I want to exist in. Now, countries like Roman Empire. Roman Empire lasted 1,000 years. If you read history, it's an amazing empire. Right? I think it far exceeds current United States or Soviet Union combined. Lasted 1,000 years. But the Bible is saying even the Roman Empire, Greek Empire, Babylonian Empire, Assyrian Empire, Persian Empire is like a drop of water in a bucket. Okay, could you picture with me a bucket? How many drops of water in there? Millions, right? But in God's eye, compared to the greatness of God, Babylonian Empire or Roman Empire is like a drop of water in a bucket. That's the greatness of God. In other words, yes, we are submit. We are called to submit to the authority, but above the all authorities, there is a sovereignty and the authority of the authority of God. And God is our authority. Okay? If this makes sense, can you say amen? That's the first thing. That's the first uh, foundational thing. And second thing we see here is good and bad. You know what the, the biblical truth is? God is the one. We have a human, institu a human constitution. What is right, what is wrong. But above all the government right and wrong, there is the law of God, the moral law of God. God sets that. And then sometimes the government contradicts that. United States government will follow most of that. But there are other governments in the world, they do not follow God at all. But you know what? The scriptural teaching is above all authorities, there is the authority of God and the moral law of God. God is a moral being. God tells what is good and what is evil. He loves good. He is good. But he hates evil. And we are called to be his people. We are created in the image of God. Right? And among other meanings of uh, being created in the image of God, you are a moral being. You are, all of you. When you see something wrong, it just signals you. When you see something right, it pleases you, okay? You are a moral being. Those two things stands as the biblical foundation. In other words, God is the authority of the authorities, and there is a higher law than U.S. Constitution or your parents' law or church law. In other words, I say one thing, and you judge it in your conscience. Is that the will of God? If it isn't, you shouldn't listen to it. No matter who says it. If the government says you need to uh, hate Christ, you need to abandon Christ, you can't listen to that. There is a higher law, and God is the higher law. Does that make sense? I think it is also applies to your parents as well. If your parents tell you to follow the world, which means to hate Christ, you don't listen to that. You do not listen to that. We need to Listen to the higher calling. Okay, those are the two things. So, uh, with that, <clears throat> do you remember Jesus uh, was asked by Pharisees, and it was a trap, basically. It was a, during the Roman Empire, and Roman Empire put heavy taxes, okay? Really heavy taxes. So, the people struggled. And the Pharisees came and asked Jesus this question right here. Tell us. What do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? It's supposed to be a trap, right? Verse 18, but Jesus, aware of their malice, 
their wickedness, said, why do you put me uh, to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for tax. And they brought him a denarius, a coin, with a Caesar's uh, you know, inscription on it. And Jesus said, said to them, whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and render to God, and what is God's. Amazing answer. Only Jesus could answer something. Amazing wisdom. But do you see clearly Jesus submitting to the authority of Roman Empire? We're going to see this. Do you realize the authority of all authorities, creator, sustainer, and he's going to be the consummator, and he submit to a puny authority of Roman Empire. Do you see that? It's amazing. Okay. Before I get to this, um, I just want to give you three uh, teachings about the government here. It's not going to answer every question you may have, but this is what the scripture is teaching about civil authorities and authorities in general. Okay. Hopefully, it'll be a paradigm shifting for you. Because we love to criticize the leaders, don't we? Do you, people around you, do they support and pray, just like First Timothy says about praying for your leaders and leaders of the nation? Or do your friends, people around you, circle of friends, people around you, they love to make joke out of the president and the leaders? Which is it? I think probably most of us, the latter. Okay? I understand. There is that flaws. I understand. There are different things. And then there are things that you don't agree. I understand. But what is the will of God? Right? What is the will of God? The key statement is this one right here, verse 5. Okay? Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the conscience. Can you imagine? You continue to rebel against your parents. You continue to rebel against leaders. Continue to rebel against your boss. Continue to rebel against your husband. Let me ask you, do you not rebel against God then? It starts from God to your heart. If you truly understand his grace and mercy, I think, and then the river could flow. My question to you is, do you think you're really good with God, but you really cannot do it with your husband? You really, really submit to God, but you really, really cannot do it with your church leaders. You can really, really submit to God, but your husband, you cannot stand. Does that make sense at all? It does not make sense, people, right? The reason, the final, uh, the, uh, the reason why we need to learn this submission, especially the, uh, to the authorities that God has established, is because of your conscience. It affects your conscience. And the conscience is the area that the Holy Spirit speaks to you what is wrong and what is right. Conscience is the area, the faculty that God has given you so that you will know what is the will of God and what is not. Do you understand that? If you continue to go against it, what are you doing then? You're following the world. That's why people make joke out of the president. Don't do that, people. Don't do that. You submit and you pray for him. Right? You honor him. I think that's what we are called to do. Does that make sense? Your conscience will be moved. You know what? In Romans uh, Gospel, conscience is the place where Holy Spirit speaks about your sin, if you have the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you, you never see your own sin. I mean, not the way you're supposed to. The difference between Christian and a non-Christian non is Holy Spirit. Okay? One is reigned by sin. The other is reigned by the Spirit, Romans Gospel, chapter 6. The difference between a conscience reigned by sin and the conscience that is reigned by the Holy Spirit, people. Holy Spirit, one of the functions is convicts of your sin and 
righteousness and the judgment. Hmm, that sounds scary. No, he allows me to see my sin and then realize I am not righteous. I'm not even close to righteous. My righteousness is him. That's what the Holy Spirit speaks to. It's not your righteousness. Remember, Jesus is the righteousness, seated on the throne, right hand of God. It doesn't change when I'm doing bad, when I'm doing good. Remember this? Several months ago, my righteousness, that's right. But he allowed me to see my, this terrible attitude toward my mom, let's say. I, I get that. Sometimes I don't want to listen. I don't want to answer. You know, my mom is 84 years old. She calls me and she repeats things like so many times. I'm like, my, and then the Spirit speaks to me. No, 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 no. Your preparation is not your priority. He speaks to me. Your preparation is not your priority. Honor your mom. You know, it, Holy Spirit speaks to me. And realize, oh, man, I'm such a, such a long way to go. So I look to Christ. Lord, would you help me so that I'll be respectful and loving and honoring? to my old mother who loved me all these years. I made so many stupid things before her, but she would be patient with me and love me. You know what I mean? Holy Spirit speaks about sin and righteousness, and he was judged on the cross. So what's going to happen to your heart if you, if you see that? Your heart will be softened. Your conscience will be purified. Because sin has been placed upon his cross. You get it, people? If you continue to not submit, it'll affect your conscience. That's what the scripture is teaching. You continue to go against what God is telling you and following the world. The Spirit speaks to you. This is going to harden your conscience, sear conscience. Okay? What is the implications? Three, because of this, you pay taxes. We Christians need to pay taxes, okay? We, I'm a, I have a dual citizenship, okay? I do have a dual citizenship. Not Korea and America, but heavenly citizenship and U.S. citizenship. I have a dual citizenship. Those who are in Christ Jesus, you have dual citizenship. Either, either Philippines and, 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 and the kingdom, or kingdom and U.S., but I have a dual citizenship. That's why, in that light, I could submit to the government because I have a, I have a higher authority and higher government. Okay? Pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all that is owed to them. Taxes, revenue, respect, and honor. Okay? That's the teaching. And I just want to give you three things for you to just take home. Number one, Romans chapter 13, this section, is about those who have a heavenly citizenship. Heavenly citizenship. How many of you have a heavenly kingdom citizenship? If you're confident about that, and I hope you are, would you say amen? I really hope you are confident about that. Because Philippians chapter 3 clearly says we have a citizenship in, in kingdom of, of heaven. We do, people. Have you ever seen a people, uh, people don't have a citizenship in this country? I mean, there are so many good people. But because one reason or another, people without citizenship, they always feel nervous sometimes, there are things to worry about and things like that, and we need to love them and support them. But if you don't have citizenship, you know, that's how we live. But we have a kingdom citizenship, and that, under that assumption, under that teaching, you submit to the government of the United States. I'm, an, I'm a U.S. citizen. I, my country is United States of America. I know I'm a Korean, uh, in, uh, heritage, but I'm a citizen of this country. I remember years ago when I was signing the U.S. Uh, citizenship, uh, what do you call that, uh, the document, this, this was one of the questions I was asked to sign. Okay? 
Are you ready for this? Should this country go to a war, will you come and fight for the country? Man, that was a real, real question. Okay? And I really just stepped back and ha had to think about it. But you know what? That's what it means to be part of this country. Submit to this country. Second thing that I want to share, and I'm going to ask you to take home, is when you submit to God, you can submit to other authorities. It's not the other way around. Submission of God, submit, submission to God, is not because of fear. If you don't do this, you're going to get beat. I'm going to beat you up. If you don't do this, I'm going to ruin your business. If you don't do this, I'm going to hurt you. Is that why we should submit to God? Is that what the gospel says? Absolutely not. You know what the submission is about? Submission is something that I want to do because of his great love and mercy toward me. Isn't it? Isn't that what the gospel is? We're like the fish caught in the huge net of disobedience, locked and consigned, and you have a no way out, people. And God has rescued you. And the wrath that you deserve and I deserve, he turned it, transferred to his own son so that he will receive all the wrath and you will be a child of God. What is that? Great, great mercy, isn't it? Great, great love. And I want to submit to him. I want to I wanna, I wanna give my everything to him. Christian submission is not about fear. Last one is what Jesus has showed, okay? I'm going to go to John chapter 19. I was thinking about this yesterday. Uh, Jesus went through, you name it, like hell before he was crucified. He went through hell, literally, okay? And he stood before someone named Pilate. He's not even the Caesar, which is like a drop in a bucket of water. He's a pilot. He's like a governor, one, just one governor of the Roman Empire. But before Pilate, let's see how Jesus uh, you know, responds. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, crucify him, crucify him, kill him, kill him. And Pilate, the governor, Roman governor, said to them, take him yourself and you crucify him. For I find no guilt, no breaking of the law in him. Of course not, because he's sinless, right? So I can't persecute, you know, you, uh, Roman government cannot punish him because he's, he's not guilty. The Jews answered him, we have a law, okay? And according to that law, he ought to, he must die because he has made himself the son of God. He is the son of God. He never break the law, right? When Pilate heard this, statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, where are you from? You know, Pilate has really, really good questions. What is the truth? He asked that question. What is the truth? Where are you from? And Jesus, remember, in other gospel, he said, my kingdom is not in this world. I'm a king. Yes, I'm a king, but my kingdom is not in this world. If it is, I will send like thousand angels and you're no more. Right? Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. He just spoke not. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you know that I have the authority, here it is, exosia, authority to release you, or the authority to kill you, crucify you? Do you hear it? That's the authority. God allowed authority to Roman government so that Pilate, a governor of the Roman Empire, has the authority to kill him or to save him, right, I, I suppose. How did Jesus answer? Jesus answered him, you would have no authority over me at all unless it has been given you from above. Do you hear it? But here's what I want you to think about. The authority of all authority is God, Father God. And he 
allow that authority given to Pilate so that Jesus may be killed. How do you like that? What is that about? What is that about? And there is Jesus. Jesus, right? Jesus submitted to the authority of God and authority of Roman government and one of the puny governing place of Judea and to Pilate so that he will be killed. How do you like that? But isn't that the gospel? The very person who's uh, writing this is who? Apostle Paul, right? And later on, ironically, he's going to go to Rome, and a few years later, he will be beheaded by the Roman government. But he's telling the Christians and Roman Christians, submit to them. Do you hear it? Here's a, here's a thought I want to I wanna give you. What would have happened if Jesus would not submit to the authority of Pilate and Roman government? What would have happened? He would, not, he would not have uh, crucified, and there is no atonement, there is no forgiveness, there is no Christianity, there is no church, there is no you, and there is no me. That's it, right? Here's the inside, Lord, just speaks to my heart. When you submit to the authority, not only that is the will of God, but it carries out the will of God. Did you hear it? Not only that is the will of God for you to submit to the authority, but it carries out the will of God. Because Jesus submitted, God accomplished what he had to do. You know, there are a lot of issues with, related to this topic, isn't it? What about totalitarians? What about Islamic government? What about abortion? What about all these things? Of course, we have a higher law. Law of God, right? But then there is a God-established government. And the will of God is you submit to them and honor them, and that's how we shine Jesus. It only makes sense if your heart is reigned by the mercy and the spirit of God. It only makes sense. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. But that's how we shine Jesus. But it makes total sense to me if Jesus himself submitted to the authority of this puny governor, right? He, he would not even speak. Where are you from? Don't you know that I have the authority to save you or to crucify you? I could either save you or kill you. Obviously, Pilate wanted to release him, right? And then Jesus didn't say, there is no authority. Unless it is from above, there is no authority. And because he did that, not only because it is the will of God, it carried the will of God. There was the cross, there was a resurrection, and then there is a church, and then there is missions, and then there is you, and then there is me. We are called to be his people. Last comment I want to make is Romans chapter 13 is preceded by Romans chapter 12. Okay? Romans chapter 12, after talking about church, you know what follows? Let your love be sincere. It speaks about love of God. Okay? You know what follows this section, Romans chapter 13? Fulfilling the law by loving, by, by the love of God. It speaks about the kind of sandwich between love of God. You know what submission is? Love for God. Christ likeness. Christ likeness, excuse me, submissiveness, Christ likeness. And we are called to be submissive. Can we pray?